Hey guys, Peter here, and I am super excited for this video because it is time for my full review of the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. I've been using this computer for about two months now, and the experience has been mostly pretty great. But that's not to say it's been perfect. There's a lot of material to cover, so let's get started. Let's get this out of the way. In terms of specs, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is terrible value for money. There are cheaper Windows laptops with more powerful processors, more, more RAM, more storage, dedicated GPUs, just more stuff. But specs really aren't the only thing that matters. Keyboards and touchpads matter, screen quality matters, software matters, and just the feel of the device matters. And that is where the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro excels. Now, I'm sorry if you heard this before, but I should still mention it. There are two fairly distinct models of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. There's the base model that uses the eighth generation Intel chips and the upgraded model, which uses the 10th gen chips. This isn't the only difference though. I believe that the upgraded model also has two fans compared to just one in the base model, as well as slightly faster RAM, higher base storage and better graphics as well. Also, the upgraded model has four Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack, while the base model only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. I went for the upgraded model because I want this computer to last a few extra years and be plenty powerful, and if you're looking at this laptop as well, I would recommend the upgraded one just for that extra bit of future proofing, and I think it's a better value for money as well. So the specs of my machine are as follows a 10th generation Intel Core i5 chip with Intel Iris Plus G7 graphics, 512 gigabytes of storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that's it. More on those later though, let's start with build quality. Build quality is excellent. The entire device feels super solid. There's no flex in the main chassis, the screen doesn't wobble, there really isn't too much to say here. Apple computers have always felt really nice, and the feel of this computer makes the price seem a bit less insane. Portability is also good. The Pro easily fits in my backpack and balances well on my lap, and basically looks good in every situation. The port selection though is uh, less ideal. With four Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack, Everything can work, but it takes dongles, and I mean a lot of dongles. In the future, USB-C will be great and will probably cover basically every need, but right now I need a dongle to plug in my USB drives, my SD cards, my HDMI display, just everything takes so many dongles. Fortunately, I got this USB-C hub from Amazon that just arrived yesterday, but before now, it was really annoying trying to get just about anything to plug into this machine. Next, we have the keyboard. If you've ever used a normal Apple keyboard, as in one made before the whole butterfly switches, it basically feels the same as the one on the MacBook Pro. There's lots of travel, decent spacing, and although it doesn't matter to me, inverted T arrow keys. I really don't understand why this is such a big deal, because I wouldn't be against having larger side arrows, but people seem to like it, so to each their own, I guess. I found I type quickly and accurately on this keyboard, reaching about 80 words per minute on average compared to 75 on other keyboards. The only issue I've had is accidentally hitting the caps lock key a few times, but that's probably just me being used to hitting the search key on Chromebooks, so that's probably something most people won't experience. Above the keyboard is something that is still very controversial, the touch bar. On one hand, I really like the touch bar for quickly editing documents, marking up things in preview, and scrubbing the timeline in Final Cut. But on the other hand, I find it really annoying when I accidentally trigger Siri when I'm trying to hit delete, and the lack of haptic feedback makes constantly having to look down to do things quite annoying. I think the fact that Apple never brought the touch bar to the MacBook Air really prevented developers from taking advantage of it, because a decent subset of Apple Mac users don't have MacBook Pros, and having to code new things just for the MacBook Pro touch bar is kind of a waste of time. I've tried a lot of third-party apps like POC, Better Touch Tool, and Haptic Touch Bar, but all of them came with their own compromises, so I've stuck with the default experience for now. I really don't know if I would choose to have the Touch Bar or not if I had the choice. It's really a trade-off, and everyone's experience will differ. On the opposite side of the keyboard is the trackpad, and I love this trackpad. Almost everyone has used an Apple trackpad at some point, and I mean the old clicky kind, and those were already great. In fact, I would consider them probably the best trackpads on the market. 
Then Apple added the new force touch functionality, the trackpads, and it is, it's so good. Like they're just so good, nothing can compare. It's super buttery smooth, feels super accurate, and it's really just like a natural extension of my hand into the computer. The haptic feedback is also super satisfying with those multiple levels of depression, and I feel like it's less likely to break as well since there's really no moving parts the gunk or dust could get into. The gestures are also amazing, basically they always have been on macOS, but just every time you use them they're so smooth. This trackpad is honestly like, it's one of the best features of the computer really. It's just, it's so good. And all of that goodness is on a huge trackpad too, because it takes up basically all of the space between the keyboard and then the end of the laptop. Now I have bought a mouse just for playing some Minecraft and editing videos, but I still find myself reaching for the trackpad to do everyday tasks. It's just that good. Now the screen. It is great. It's bright, it's punchy, and it's super high resolution. I have to get within about three inches of it to discern individual pixels, so there's really no worries there. It would be nice if the bezels were slightly smaller, especially because something like the Dell XPS has really tiny bezels, which makes the MacBook Pro bezels look a, a bit big, but other than that, it's pretty good. It isn't a touchscreen, but I really don't think it needs to be. The touchpad is just so good, I never really felt a need to touch the screen. Although macOS Big Sur does give you bigger icons and more space between menu items, I still think it would be a pretty poor touch experience. Not touching the screen also minimizes fingerprint marks, but I found the few fingerprints I did get on the screen really stuck and were quite visible. The screen also gets super bright, and I mean like really bright. I usually keep my computer screens around 100% brightness just for indoor viewing because I like the light, but I rarely have to bring this one above 60 or 70% except when I'm outdoors or in really high light situations. One final note is that I found the bezel really picked up a lot of dust, although it's probably just more visible because it's so black and glossy. All in all, this is a great screen. There's nothing too special about it, it's just a great screen, that's all there is to say, I guess. Now, this is a laptop we're talking about, so battery life is pretty important. I found I got about 6 or 7 hours on medium light usage, which is decent, but it's nothing incredible. The thing I miss most coming from a Chromebook is definitely the battery life, but everything else kind of makes up for it. It'll be interesting to see how the battery life is on the upcoming Apple Silicon Max, because I expect it to be pretty great. Probably the most important aspect of a computer, especially something like the MacBook Pro, which is advertised for professionals, is performance. This computer is using the 10th gen Intel Core i5, which is decent, but it is using integrated graphics, so you're not going to be getting amazing graphics performance. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is great for keeping everything open and not having to reload pages or apps, and also has 512 gigabytes of fast SSD storage, so files open quickly. For daily tasks like email, web browsing, Zoom calls, document editing, making presentation, this thing absolutely flies. So far, the biggest bottleneck really has been my Wi-Fi connection, which, you know, could be better. Doing things like editing videos in Final Cut and editing photos in Pixelmator Pro has also been very smooth and fluid. I've barely noticed any slowdowns, and really the slowest thing that I've found is actually transcoding video. Other than that, everything is super smooth and there's really no lag anywhere in Final Cut. Now, not having this GPU does make gaming a bit rough, so playing Minecraft will really start spinning up the fans and makes the laptop pretty hot, but it does still run fine. I did try to use shaders for a bit, but it just made the computer hold up the white flag and reduced it down to 2 or 3 frames per second, so it was absolutely unplayable. However, if you are considering this machine, I'm going to assume gaming isn't really your number one priority. And for everything else, it's really a pretty good package considering this is a thin and light 13 inch laptop. In terms of software, well, it runs macOS. I'm personally a fan of macOS, but some people like Windows, and it's purely personal preference. You can actually run Windows on this machine. I did, and it works pretty well. But this is a Mac, so you really, you know what to expect from the software. Finally, the speakers. I rarely use them, but they seem pretty good. I prefer to use headphones for getting work done and a Bluetooth speaker for filling larger spaces, so I can't really offer much insight there. Now, before I end the video, I want to go back to the start. In terms of raw specs, the 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro isn't good value for money, but specs aren't everything. 
The hardware and software of this machine come together for an experience that very few computers can rival. If you need a new laptop that is portable but still powerful, the 13-inch MacBook Pro is pretty great. It has amazing build quality, a great keyboard, an outstanding trackpad, pretty good performance, and an amazing screen. All of this comes together for just a really great package. Alright, if you enjoyed this review, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I have some other Mac videos you might want to check out, links on the end screen. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next